whole system is corrupt. They've shown their true colours. I was unbanked by a bank I banked with for, since I was 10 years old. It went on for a 12 week period where I literally couldn't access any money. I threatened two things. I said, I'm either going to go into the store with a baseball bat or I'm going to step out in front of a lorry because you guys give me no choice. The whole system needs to be burnt to the ground and we're not physically going to burn it to the ground so we're going to create a parallel system with the market is going to decide who the winner is and I believe Bitcoin is the winner. I think uh, I never covered the topic on, on my podcast about sports and Bitcoin. So I was like, Do, you're the perfect man for, for doing that. Uh, and you're also like on Bitcoin conferences in Madeira. I think you were also on stage, I think. Uh, so this was uh, really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, thank you for inviting me on. Um, yes, I, I was at Madeira recently. I had a, a side um, talk. It's part of the educational um event that they had there. We also did some uh, satellite events with football or soccer, some people may call it. So we had a, the Bitcoin Atlantis Football Cup. I did some skills training sessions with the young children that were the festival. So yeah, it was really good. And, um, and then uh, upcoming next week, shout out to the Bitcoin Fest in the UK. Uh, uh, it's going to be held at Carlton FC in Nottingham, uh, another fo Bitcoin football team taking on the Bitcoin standard, uh, a whole a, a festival before the game on next, next Saturday for people to come and learn, discuss Bitcoin and, and watch some football afterwards. So there's a lot, lots of synergies between football and Bitcoin, lot with other other passions that people have um, we, with the sport, but also with creative, creative skill that people have. You can align Bitcoin with it. Really cool. And what are those uh, synergies? Like what are the connections uh, of, of sports, football and, and Bitcoin? How does Bitcoin influence in the future also sports and, and football? How do you imagine that? Yeah, well, ultimately, ultimately, it's about proof of work. So how you perform on the pitch, on the field or, or whatever sport you're doing, the results that you get are going to be directly correlated with the, with the work that you put in. So if you're not training, if not doing your own research, you're not doing your due diligence, then your performance will show. So those that are out week in, week out performing, showing that they are the best of the best, they put in the work outside of the, outside of the field, on the training ground, and it shows show on the pitch. Amazing. I just uh, plugged my earpods in, so I think now okay. I can hear you even better. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that. Okay. I, I thought there was a lag. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Then uh, this is really cool. I see a lot of uh, Bitcoiners uh, doing the proof of work, doing the training, doing the fitness stuff. Uh, it's like interesting for me if you go to Bitcoin conferences. Obviously, there are also people that don't work out. There's obviously people uh, uh, that that are on their journey to becoming fitter. Uh, but in general, Bitcoiners are pretty. Uh, fit. If you go to Bitcoin conferences, you go to Bitcoin meetups, you're like, you're seeing usually pretty healthy people because they fix their money and then this influences kind of their lives. How do you see this uh, uh, connection going? And th did you have the same experience? Like, did Bitcoin come into your life after you were, you were fit? Probably, right? Yeah, so I, I've been on a, a journey of rabbit holes and like many people dis dismiss Bitcoin um, I had various touch points before, but didn't really have time to look into it or understand it. I went on a rabbit hole journey through health and wellness back in 2018. And funnily enough, so my former life, I was a construction project manager. And mm. then I started to look into health and wellness and fitness. My site manager asked me one day, can I bring in my GPU um, into the office? I went, yeah, that's fine. Just keep them happy. And I came in one day and he told me he was mining Bitcoin and I totally dismissed it. So the reason why I'm so passionate about talking about Bitcoin now is because I feel like I want to be the person that I thought I should have had at the time, but also I want to encourage people to be inquisitive, to, to yeah, ask questions. Because I didn't ask any questions about why he was mining Bitcoin or what it was. Uh, I'd seen it on the news a little bit, but didn't really have any enough time to look into it. But yeah, Joe, on that, that journey of health and wellness, I'd learned about fighting the FUD, self-belief. I learned about delayed gratification. Um, that then led me to in a position when COVID happened uh, to make the decision to leave my job as a construction project manager. I didn't feel happy. I wasn't happy. Didn't feel fulfilled. I didn't feel like I was providing value um, at all. Yes, I was completing projects um, on time. The clients were happy, but for me, it's like, what am I providing to the world? Um, so yeah, when COVID came around, I took redundancy. Um, I then started to focus on health and wellness. And at that time, a friend of mine said to me, who wants to discuss crypto? We're in, in a friend's group chat. 
And I said, yeah, hey, why not? I'll have the time to do it. The first thing he said, and I'll never forget, was uh, do your own research. So I did a month of deep dive, and because I had the free time, spent about eight to 10 hours a day of listening, reading, watching YouTube. By the end of the month, I was like, whoa, this is it. This this is what I want to learn more about. Um, and I've been on a, a deep dive rabbit hole journey since, as, as you'll, you'll appreciate, so three and a half years, um, coming up to the, my first full cycle. I say to people now, if I was doing a degree, I'd be doing my master's year. Uh, so it's funny because if you were doing a degree and your master's, people would say you're, you're well-educated. I appreciate that people in the space, uh, we are probably in the 1% of the, of the population with our knowledge, but there's still so much that I don't know and don't understand that I'm really excited to learn about. So it's a it's an ongoing evolution of myself and Coach Carbon. Uh, last week was, uh, was, th- uh, was four years where I decided that I'm going to be a coach and try and make the world a better place, and make people healthier and happier. I now understanding how money works through health, wealth, and lifestyle coaching. That's my mission to, to have, make the world healthier, wealthier, and happier one person at a time. And if we can all each one, each one teach one, it's a mission that, that's worthwhile. It's not going to happen probably in our lifetime. Um, it might take a generation or two, but if we are, if we're all learning and bettering ourselves, and helping others do the same, then it's going to make the world a better place. So, yeah, I found the health and wellness first, but then that primed me for Bitcoin. And as you say, people that understand Bitcoin then discuss time preference, delay gratification, understanding your yourself better, mind and body. So it's, it's a whole encompassing of becoming the best the best version of yourself. That's amazing. And, and what do you like? Uh, I see a lot of people uh, getting more in health and wellness. I think we're progressing as a society in general, especially with so much information out there. And it's, it's, it's getting easier and easier to do that. But at the same time, we have uh, really big corporations doing uh, <laughs> a lot of sugar, a lot of processed foods, a lot of stuff. And people are lazy just going to McDonald's and stuff like that. So, like, I see, so you see, like, two trends going on people that are uh, doing the research doing the uh, the harder stuff and actually doing their own work and as you do it, did your own research but also the people that are just like on autopilot going to mcdonald's doing the, the, all the stuff and, and just eating what they're trying to figure out and what ah supermarket just take this 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 and, and just do something uh, which is not completely bad but it's just not unaware of, of what your potential could be i think uh, so how do you see uh, like health and wellness going like what what do you usually recommend people like because I think <laughs> it's 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 pretty not good to just give them like this you should do is better no. to like push them towards a direction and then get them on a journey like what how do you do that it, it definitely goes hand in hand uh, health and wealth so it's never been easier to learn about your health and to learn about wealth but the easy option is to let the state do it for you. So listening to the, the food pyramid that, that the state give you, it's not going to make you healthier. Uh, with, with your money, oh, yes, you can just use our fear or use our CBDT that's coming. That's easy. That's the easy option. But it's harder to actually say, actually, I'm going to do my research. I'm going to find out what lifestyle is right for me in terms of nutrition, um, in terms of my money. How can I make my money work for me? Going down that rabbit hole, you might start looking at, stocks and shares and then actually seeing that's how manipulated well what what is the definition of money and that will lead you to bitcoin and understand that bitcoin is the best form of, of money that we've ever had that takes work but once you've done the work it's easy all a sailor says this just dc you buy a little and often just have one basket and watch that basket very carefully so you don't need to diversify and myself and many other bitcoin plebs around the world outperforming all these money managers, asset managers, just by DCA. <laughs> it's, a, it's so easy, but you have to do the work to get there. And it's the same with your with your, your health and wellness. It's easy. Sorry, it's never been easier to find out information. The information's out there, YouTube, books. But you have to obviously do your own research, find out what works for you, and do it consistently, day in, day out. Now, I'm not saying you have to be a monk and not have any, say, pleasures. You are allowed to have the, the, the food and drink that, that is not the, the best for you because we are, we are not allowed to live. But if you have a consistent lifestyle c- uh, continuously week after week, month after month, year after year, it's going to take time. But then you'll get to a position where 
yeah, you're becoming the best version of yourself. And it's easy, it's easy to maintain once you have those habits in place. Uh, interesting. Uh, this, is there anything that was coming up on your journey in Bitcoin that you learned about finances outside of Bitcoin, like personal finance habits or stuff like that? Of, <laughs> of course, DCAs is, is the obvious one, but did, did you learn anything yeah. uh, above that with budgeting, anything like uh, that? I've learned so much. I thought I knew money before. Um, I was into stocks and shares. I, ha I, had, I had small holdings. But the more I learned about Bitcoin, the more I learned about econ economics, Austrian economics, things I talk about, discuss now. For the four years ago, me would look back and look at myself in the future, think, "Who is this guy?" But it's a <laughs> quest. It's a quest for knowledge. I, I love learning about all of this stuff, and there's been lots of touch to turning points in my journey um, that have happened because of Bitcoin. Uh, but if I hadn't understood Bitcoin, I wouldn't really know where to go. So, um, long story short, I was unbanked by a bank I banked with for. Uh, since I was 10 years old, mm. um, just for the fact that I interacted, tried to interact with Bitcoin. Um, as it happened, it went on for a 12-week period where I literally couldn't access any money. But because, obviously, I'd been down my whole journey, I understood Bitcoin, I was able to survive. But the bank didn't know that. So I was I was prepared for what happened. But in my back of my mind, I think I thought, I need to learn more about Bitcoin and tell people because someone else could end up in this situation and not know what to do, not know where to turn. It could be life ending for them. Um, and that's how I I managed to resolve the issue because it was just dragging on, dragging on. And again, I mentioned I had free time, so I could go to the bank and sit there for three hours. People on the front line, the nicest people in the world, but they're not decision makers. It was literally them on the computer. Sorry, sir, computer says no, day in, day out. But it got to the point where I thought, you guys are absolutely taking the mic now. We need to sort this out. Um, I'm not recommending this to people, but I threatened two things to on the phone to one of the fraud team. I said, I'm either going to go into the store with a baseball bat or I'm going to step out in front of a lorry because you guys give me no choice. Within 10 minutes, the issue was resolved. Please, sir, come into the bank to, re to remove your funds. You are, We no longer want you to bank with us, but the issue is resolved. It's like, this has gone on for 12 weeks. You could have done this ages ago, but until they see like a need because they don't want on the front of a newspaper, uh, a father, um, a husband, sorry, with two children, two young children, took his own life or went in and smashed up a bank because we couldn't give him his money. They didn't want that publicity. It's like, yeah, the whole system is corrupt. They've shown their true colors. Um, and the fact that they have shown their hand to me personally, but also to the world in terms of what happened during COVID. We saw what happened with the Gain Street saga, what's going on now with SBF, the fact that He only got 25 years in prison, but you get Ross Ulbricht still in prison to serve, serve two life sentences. Like, now nah, the, the whole system, without sounding, sounding too radical and anarchistic, needs to be burnt to the ground. And we're not physically going to burn it to the ground, so we're going to create a parallel system. And like true true markets, where the, the market is going to decide who the winner is. And I believe Bitcoin is the winner. Same as says, there is no second best. And we have the best people, the best minds, bringing our best. The other side don't seem to be sending their best, and I, I question why. Maybe they have an ultimate boss that we need to defeat at the end, but I think that we are becoming anti-fragile, and we will soon be ready for that ultimate boss, whether it is in, in terms of a major CBDC or all the governments coming, coming together, but I can't see all the governments coming together as one. So you talk about incentive structures. If they can't beat us, they're going to have to join us. Uh, you have El Salvador... Now you'd be Kelly flying the flag. Who's going to be the next one? It's in their interest to join us rather than fight it. So it might be a slow, slow battle, slow war, but I think we will win ultimately. Right, well, that is a lot in there. What you just said. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that, that was really, really cool. Um, before, like, just to give some background to the story, where was this bank? When was this? Uh, just for people that. Uh, uh, And I, I, I won't name them, but I, I call them Sharfley's Bank. They're a well-known bank worldwide. <laughs> um, but I think they have improved, apparently, it's, uh, on Twitter. They have a, someone told me they have a ded dedicated crypto fraud team now that are very helpful, mm. which unfortunately didn't help me a few years ago, but it seems like they are, again, they are learning, they are changing their methods. So someone some, some had an issue in the Bitcoin space, and he said it was resolved within a couple of hours rather than 12 weeks. So... 
yeah, they have improved. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing for me that this happens. I mean, I... Uh, tried to get a loan uh, once because I just wanted to try it out because I heard it's really hard to get a loan when you're a Bitcoiner and I was like okay let's let's try it out I, I did not need a loan <laughs> I was just getting a loan for for fun basically uh, I just wanted to try it out and I went to 20 different uh, banks and the 20th <laughs> gave me one <laughs> I was like yes I succeeded but it was taking taking me like okay it took me eight months obviously I could do, do it in a short amount but I did not have stress I just wanted to try it out so like I was not depending on the money so I was like let's try it out uh, but in the end of the day I got it uh, and uh, it's it was interesting but every bank before was like we, we see some uh, unusual activities on your bank account and I was like what's unusual What, what do I buy that's unusual? What, what's, what's happening? Did I get scammed or something? Like, no, there's this, you, you, you invest in Bitcoin, right? <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> And how cautious they are, like, ooh. <laughs> yeah, well, it's the unknown, is it? They, they don't know what it is, so they're scared of it. Um, yeah, we've, but we've done our research. We, we understand it a, a lot more than them. Um, so, yeah, they, that, that's, I think that's indifferent. They haven't spent the time, but uh, there are those within the space, though, I'd say the fiat world, that maybe have spent the time, but no, it's not in their interest for Bitcoin to work. So those that speak illly of it either are ignorant, haven't done the work, or they, they have ulterior motives. Yeah, definitely. And it's, it's, it's fascinating because if you have, uh, if, if you come with a bank statement there and you can barely make it with the bank statement, uh, and you say, Oh, I want to go on a two weeks holidays. Please give me 5,000 euros. They probably give it yeah. to you. Fine, fine, yeah. But <laughs> if you have a good balance sheet, a good bank statement with a few Bitcoin transactions with it. No, 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 no. That's too risky. That we, we cannot yeah, give you. You're not, you're not, you're not attractive to them. You're a savvy investor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which leads me to the next uh, topic um, when when we have this Bitcoin and you talk about how Bitcoin like influenced your life and how Bitcoin can influence other lives how where do we go like where where's the society ending up in like 50 100 years when Bitcoin is a standard like do you see changes on a broader scale on society yeah without sounding too optimistic I believe we have that The, the renaissance as Stacey Herbert and Max Kaiser talk about. We've seen what's happening in El Salvador, what we're looking at, just over two years of Bitcoins, as Bitcoin as legal tender. And it's not just the fact that Bitcoin is legal tender that has caused a change, but it, it allows people to come and invest. It opens up for investment. People then want to then visit and spend money. People on, on the island then are accepting uh, Bitcoin. They're seeing how it works, how it works as a unit of account, as a store of value. Mindsets change. Already they've seen a change in their GDP. Um, the approval rate of Bikeli has gone up because they've seen change in, in their, their society and the safety. So the, the, the safety of the country has gone up. That is just a small example. Um, you can look at individuals in the Bitcoin space that have changed their lifestyles, who created businesses. But again, you are incentivized to deliver value and be the best version. And if you don't, the community or the network will, will, will soon ostracize or, or push you out because you're not providing value. So it changes people's mindset. And if you look at it on a micro, micro scale, you can see the change. So if we open it out and think, okay, we've had coming up to the fourth cycle, in two, three more cycles, we're just going to add more people to the network, more people bring in their best, more value being created. It has that network effect of, of creating the world, making the world a better place, I believe. Um, It's not just me that thinks that. There are many others. So people have written books about it. They've been on podcasts. So don't just listen to me. Look into Bitcoin. See what you can offer as, as value with, with your skills, with your creativity. Um, and just, just go with it. Go f learn about it for just leave at least one cycle. Uh, people talk about doing 100 hours of research of Bitcoin and, and not being an essay and, and, th and being positive, bullish about it. I would argue the same. Do your 100 hours of, of research. Go through one cycle and see how you feel afterwards. And I think this, this hours even come down a little bit with, with time. When you were in like 2015, you needed a lot more hours to actually understand it because information was so hard to find. Nowadays, there's mm. so many great uh, educators in the space where you can go there, you can listen to videos, listen to podcasts, you can uh, read books, you can do so many different stuff in, in Bitcoin to get educated. So now nobody has any excuse not to get educated. <laughs> if, if, exactly. If, if, yeah, if, if you don't get... There is 
no excuse. <laughs> if if you don't get Bitcoin, you are either lazy or arrogant. <laughs> so yeah. It's uh, one of those two things. Uh, mostly, it's a, a mix of both of them. Uh, how do you see actually um, uh, adoption growing? Like you were in, did you were in uh, El Salvador already? Did you saw the adoption there? No, I haven't been. I would love to go. I do plan to go this year, um, later on in the year. But um, yeah, adoption for me, it's going to just be ease of use. Um, There are many Bitcoiners who have been in the space longer than me who I'm amazed that don't really understand the use cases of Lightning. For me, Lightning has always been around in the space since, since I started learning about it. So I just see that as, as a natural natural step. In four years' time, there are people, there are people that will join the space that will probably look at the stuff I'm doing and think that's so old and dated. This is what we're doing now. So just adoption, ease of use. If you've got a mobile phone that can scan a QR code, you can use Bitcoin. People are already using their phone for payments, so that it's not a massive step for them to take. Before, if you were trying to do a, a transaction on chain and waiting 10 minutes, that might be, be a bit alien to some people who are used to instant transactions. Now we have Lightning, we have the LN URLs, the, the, the like email address that you can pay, you can scan QR codes. There's, there's so much more you could do. Even the spit time that I've been understanding Bitcoin, it's like, yeah, the next cycle, there's, there's going to be a lot more adoption. We've got gaming now, you could earn sets by gaming, um, Smiles app, by, by walking, you are rewarded. People understand reward structures. They have loyalty cards with their supermarkets. These things are now happening with Bitcoin on Lightning. Um, and a lot, there's lots more development going on. So I think adoption, I think there's a name, the curve, I can't remember the name of the curve, but adoption happens faster over a period of time. So for me, I've seen massive change in the last three and a half years. So I'm really excited to see what happens in the next four years when we're, on board in the, the next generation, young or old, but the class of 2024 onwards, it's going to be so easy for them to understand it because they are already using the, the, the technology with money or fear, shall I say. Yeah, I mean, the theory is like, right, there's this S-curve adoption uh, where That's you have it, yeah. like, uh, to a certain point, it goes quite low. Uh, and it's like usually around a decade, 15 years, something like that. And we are, coming closer and closer to this point where Bitcoin hits this uh, S-curve adoption craziness. And then it just takes a decade from like this 10% of adoption to like 90% adoption. And yeah. uh, I mean, at Madeira, um, Michael Saylor also talked about uh, the gold rush in the next 10 years. Uh, then we have now the Bitcoin ETFs uh, in, in the game. We have a lot of public traded companies. We have counters in the game. Uh, um, Peter Dunworth talked about uh, structured products products that he expects to, to come. There's uh, so much amazing things happening in Bitcoin right now that we can actually imagine or could imagine the next 10 years being crazy bullish on Bitcoin. And even maybe, I don't know what you think about that, maybe even breaking this four-year cycle thing where we have three years up <laughs> and one year down. Uh, yeah. this, this could break uh, when we hit this like 10% and then go through like maybe it's coming like yeah. like not not now but maybe later I don't know uh, but I think we will hit at some point this crazy cycle where like it's it's the S-curve adoption is so crazy and people are like oh shit we have to take Bitcoin and there's so many people coming in it's like a an, an flood of people uh, because yeah fear this is, is madness and, and we have to <laughs> <laughs> to take care of that. Definitely. Uh, and as I keep quoting Michael Saylor, but as Saylor once said, your, all your models are broken. We are looking back on data for, for like the last three cycles. And it, yeah, they have this cycle does look similar. But going forward, we haven't been in this situation, as you mentioned, countries, um, big corporations are getting involved. And just the, the plebs on the ground, the network has grown a number of users. It's like, yeah, we can try and predict where it's going, but. I wouldn't put money money on that because it's just yeah, there's so much going on. It'd be hard it'd be hard to predict exactly how the cycle will work. So again, do your own research, DCA if, if you're going to invest in Bitcoin and just mm. keep just keep learning every day. Uh, definitely. And one thing is actually different about this cycle. We hit the all time high before the halving. Uh, if I'm correct, this never happened in the history before that we hit the all time high before the halving happened. Usually it's afterwards. So 
I don't know if it's a sign. I, I, I really don't care about it, that, that actually. It's just interesting you talk about, but my DCA plan is going no matter what's happening anyways. <laughs> and I'm yeah. all, all in Bitcoin anyway, so I don't care really. Uh, but it's fun to talk about. And uh, I want to take one step back uh, to uh, you are a professional football player. You speak at Bitcoin conferences. Uh, you do a lot of stuff. You help people uh, excel in life. Um, what drives you? Like, wh why, why, why do you do that? Just, just a correction. I, I wasn't a professional. I played semi-pro. I, I call myself a nearly man. Um, I didn't quite make it. I played semi-pro for a few years after being at a professional club as a, as a trainee. Um, so I probably was as close as I was ever going to be. But uh, what? yeah, that, that is exactly what drives me. How I understand myself now, my mindset, my body. Um, if I had this knowledge when I was younger... I would have given myself a greater chance. I'd never say to people I would have made it because who knows, but my mindset now, I would have given myself a better chance. And that's my driver now for the next generation. As I said, I'm a father. I have a, a young son who's in a similar situation where I was at his age at 18, where he's on the cusp of being a professional. Now I want to instill the values that I have now and habits that I say to him, just do this again for maybe four to eight years, between four to eight years and see where you end up. But Why I'm so passionate now about incorporating Bitcoin is because Bitcoin could offer you the time. Um, again, I don't want to put price um, or attention, a bit of attached price to Bitcoin at a certain point. But if you are DCAing and learning about it from a young age, where it gets to the point where you may decide, actually, I need to get a full time job, which then takes time away from your training or football, you might be able to with your holding to live a frugal lifestyle for a few more years so you can dedicate a bit more time. Um, again, doing your own research, doing your own diligence in, in football terms, you can spend a bit more time honing your skills that will give you that best opportunity. And if it happens to so many people who they come to a fork in life where they make a decision, do I concentrate on my craft and my passion or do I go into the, the rat race, as I call it? I, at one, at one point, went on the rat race route 15 years into my career, I realized I shouldn't be here. I'm a construction project manager and I wanted to be a professional footballer. I had a great lifestyle. I had, I had a family, but it's like I didn't pursue my dream. And uh, now I'm able to pursue my dream in terms of the health and wellness that I love, get paid for, help get, get, um, helping people keep fit. I get to talk about Bitcoin and I get to incorporate my two passions, Bitcoin and football, with my Bitcoin Borders Academy, training and educating young people on football and Bitcoin. It's just, yeah, I'm happy where I am right now, but I want I have a message um, that I believe should be passed on to young people. Um, obviously, I, I speak to lots of people, but for me specifically, it's the next generation coming through, trying to free their mindset from the fiat world, um, which we are indoctrin indoctrinated in at birth. We have no choice. We live in that world. But just like the Matrix, you have the choice to take the orange pill or the, or the blue pill. And uh, if you have that knowledge, you can choose, actually, I'm going to exit exit the matrix and yeah live live this lifestyle that's going to create the best vision of myself or i'm just going to be like everyone else that's amazing and i see also in the background uh, the bitcoin ballers uh shirt uh what, what actually is the bitcoin ballers what are you doing there so uh bitcoin ballers that uh, was a project i started almost three years ago so april in 2021 and that was after a, a few months of going down the rabbit hole, meeting, networking with people. I joined a learning group that was hosted by Daniel Prince from Once Bitten Podcast. There's about 12 of us on call each week uh, all around the world, all different levels of understanding of Bitcoin, just discussing what Bitcoin meant to us and what we wanted to do. Uh, one week we had a surprise guest uh, on. It was John Vallis. Uh, I tell this story to people and some people who know about Bitcoin think, oh my gosh, John Vallis. Others who don't know about Bitcoin think, who's this guy? But for him, I'm forever grateful um, I introduced myself. I said, I'm Josiah. Um, I'm new in the Bitcoin, but I want to provide value back because I've got so much for the community. Uh, but I'm not a software engineer or developer. And then John just said, why don't you provide value in your community? And at that moment, the, the penny dropped. It's like, it's football and Bitcoin. I'm going to bring the two together. I, I understand the principles and fundamentals that, that cross over. So I launched that night. I, did, I made, made the Bitcoin Brothers brand on Instagram. And we officially launched on the 21st and the 4th, 21. So those that are into Bitcoin and 21ism would appreciate the date. And it just so happens that the third year birthday um, coincides roughly with the, with the halving. So I didn't plan it that way, but it just it just happened. So with the Bitcoin Borders Academy or Bitcoin Borders Club brand, 
I help educate young people on Bitcoin through football. Uh, but I say to people, just like Bitcoin, we have the similarities. We are a decentralized team. So you see the shirts behind me. They are the new shirts that should be coming out shortly. We had another strip that was sponsored by Coin Corner, and that was funded through Geyser, um, through the Geyser platform. Uh, but the premise is we put teams together. We entered them in tournaments. So we have young girls teams, boys teams. We had adult teams play. Or if you're just an individual and you want to put on a Bitcoin baller shirt, you are by definition a Bitcoin baller. Um, I have numerous skills competitions that people can partake in. Uh, 21 seconds to glow, which is your, your keepy uppies. So you're doing your football tricks. How many skills can you do in 21 seconds? We have a game called peer to peer. See how many times you can keep the ball up between you and your partner. And uh, another game called getting off zero, where you're shooting five balls into a target net. Um, but with the, with this game, there is no time limit, so you can shoot from far away and really quickly the five shots, but you're highly unlikely to get a high score. Or you can take the ball really close and put it in low, get a low score, but um, and to get a low score in a long time. And this is talking about your time preference. So over time, the more you practice, you can then start to shoot from a little bit further away and possibly hit those high targets. So you're getting a high score in a quicker time. Liken that to your Bitcoin rabbit hole journey. I wouldn't advise discovering Bitcoin one day and going all in with, with, with your investment. What I would suggest is take your time, do your own research, do your own diligence, and over time you get a bit more confidence, have more confidence in your conviction, and then taking those long shots from from, um, from far away, getting a quick time, it will be it's down to your, your proof of work and your conviction. So people that take part in the games who have played in teams may not understand Bitcoin to a level yet, but I've dropped the seeds, I've, I've used the terminology, so... If they do eventually come across it, they have the analogy, oh, I can relate, relate that to this game that a coach played or this game that I played with Bitcoin borders. Yes, I'll, that makes sense to me. So I'm using Bitcoin. Uh, so I'm using football. Other people are using art, literature, music. Whatever your passion is, link it with Bitcoin and help educate people because not everyone's going to understand it from the same point of view. So if I meet someone now who's not into football, I, then I know I can find and their passion and direct them to someone in the space who's utilizing Bitcoin. Say, oh, check out this person. Uh, prime example, uh, Victoria Collette, she wrote Truth to Cage is a dentist. A good friend of mine is a dentist. She's not going to understand Bit for, uh, Bitcoin through me talking about football, but she will by reading Victoria's book, Truth to Cage. So it's all about finding, meeting people where they're at, but also incorporating your passion in, into Bitcoin and helping people understand it that way and having fun as well. You must, you've got to have fun with it. Yeah, that's why I'm also so bullish on, for example, like because we're talking about sports, football, and Bitcoin. Uh, there are so many football clubs are now putting like Bitcoin sponsors yeah. on there, or getting directly Bitcoin sponsored. And there's an Austria club, there are like a few other clubs around the world. There's even Real Badfoot from Peter McCorney. Yeah. They, uh, I think he posted yesterday or so a, a tweet that uh, he wants to get in the Premier League with, with Real Bedford which is an <laughs> a high yeah. target but let's let's see how, yeah. uh, how they can pull it off uh, so I'm really I'm really passionate about having uh, Bitcoin connected with the passions of people and then we can actually meet the people where they are as you said and and, and get them to understand the, the power of sound money right yeah, um, definitely. Well, and as Aaron Dawn said, he's a hairdresser who was interviewed by Daniel Prince. When your passions collide with your incentives, amazing things happen. And that's what big callers are doing. We are incentivized to be the best versions of ourselves and to talk to people about Bitcoin to help them understand it. Um, Finding that with your passion, the Bitcoin community is going to support you. If you're a scammer, fraudster, you will soon get found out and you will get you get pushed aside, as, as I said. But if you're creating value and people people can see that, the, the Bitcoin community will support you. I know people that have supported me and sent me sats through guys that don't even like football, but because they can see my passion, um, they, they know it's for a good cause. I'm, I'm working with young people. They want to support because they want to see Bitcoin adoption, but they also want to see people working in this space and, and, fo and follow their passion. So, yeah, if you have something that you, that you, that you really love and you can think of a way to to link Bitcoin with it, do it, but don't expect results straight away. I, as I said, three and a half years into my journey, Bitcoin borders happened overnight, but it's taken three and a half years to get where we are um, in terms of putting teams together, entering tournaments. I've hosted my own tournaments. We're now hopeful, working to get um, registered into the world's uh, biggest 77 tournament in Cary, North Carolina. 
which happens uh, next June. We'll, we'll search for a sponsor. So you, you can see uh, see the space there. There's space for sponsorship if anyone wants to put their logo on the front, uh, a Bitcoin company. Uh, the, the TST, the soccer tournament, they're announcing teams at the moment. So there's 48 teams taking part with the chance to win $1 million. I think they've announced 30 today, so there are 18 spaces less left. Uh, each day that goes by when they announce a team, we have we have less chance to get in, but all hope is not lost yet. Um, we, we are in contact with them. They are waiting for us to say we have the, the sponsorship to get in. So as Satoshi says, you mentioned Peter McCormack's dream of winning the Premier League. My dream is to take a team to the tournament, win the million dollars, get Bitcoin out there and show people what Bitcoiners are about. Um, the mainstream media will tell you they're for drug dealers, criminals, but I'm telling you, no, it's for everybody. Um, anybody that wants financial freedom or, or sovereignty. We are a collective group of people from all different walks of life with a shared belief, shared under, understanding. So as Satoshi says, if enough people think the same way, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So uh, if anyone wants to check out what I'm doing, follow me on Twitter, check out my webpage, um, my YouTube channel, because I believe this is a great way to help adoption of, across the world. Again, football is a, a universal language of a sport. Bitcoin is a universal money for the world. Bringing the, bring the two together, I think it's, it's a great opportunity we, we have as Bitcoiners. And, and we'll be playing, not as Bitcoin Bowlers Academy, but as Bitcoin. So everyone, everyone can get involved. If one wins, we all win, is, is, is a term of coin. 21 Bitcoin is Bitcoin only from day one. And they teach and preach self-custody. This is my go-to exchange when someone asks me, oh, where can I buy my Bitcoin from? This is the easiest entry for Bitcoiners. And if you want lower fees, plus at the same time support this podcast, use code ROBIN and click the link in the description. It's an amazing project. Like it's it's, it's a tournament where you can win a million dollars and it's like uh, with a lot of attention there, right? Yeah, yeah. So they would get, I think, they're forecasting over a million viewers. That, I think that's what they had last year on um, by their, their their channels. They've just linked with ESPN as well, I think. Um, on site, it's like 70,000 plus people that would attend the tournament. Mm -hmm. You can imagine the Wimbledon tennis tournament. Um, it's like that, but for soccer or for football. So it's, a, it's an incredible, incredible tournament. It would be incredible if we get there and anyone listening, This started as a project for just me on an Instagram page. So this is just three and a half years, almost almost one cycle. No one knows where you're going to be in three, four years' time. So yeah, have, if you have that idea, have that project, run with it, work on it, put your proof of work in day in, day out, and you never know where you can end up. That's amazing. That's amazing. And uh, speaking of like in-person uh, events and, and meetups and conferences, uh, I think it's amazing that we have all those Bitcoin-only conferences and Bitcoin-only meetups where, where people can go. Um, do, do you also in, in, attend them? Like, of course, uh, you were Madeira. Do you also like visit uh, Bitcoin meetups locally, stuff like that? And, and what role do you think is, is, is community in general playing in, in, in Bitcoin? Yeah, so for the big conferences, I've, I've been to Amsterdam twice. Uh, had tickets to Miami twice, but had to sell tickets because of the uh, restrictions of getting into the country. Um, me me so too. We won't, talk <laughs> <laughs> uh, we won't talk too much more on that, but the people that I sold tickets to messaged when they got there and said it was easy, got straight in. But knowing my luck, I would have got there and got turned away. Because I think some people actually did. Um, uh, locally, I host a meetup called Oxbit. I just well, actually got my mic actually to be drinking a lot of. So Oxbit meets up uh, in, in Oxford. Um, in terms of what they provide, for me, it's just an opportunity for people to come and talk. Uh, and I joked at the last I had, event I had a couple of weeks ago, there used to be internet meetups. People used to get together at cafes and talk about the internet. We may look back one day and think, oh, there were Bitcoin meetups. That's crazy. What? How, why would people talk about Bitcoin? But we're out at that stage where it's not really known. So if we create spaces that people can come and ask questions, we are helping the network and we're also helping the community. So wherever you are, we can use Orange Pill app. Uh, shout out Orange Pill app. They've supported Bitcoin Borders as well, Bitcoin Borders. If you get download the app, you can see people who are, who are close by with you. Arrange a meetup. Talk about Bitcoin because you might meet someone that's local that, that you don't know is into Bitcoin um, and have discuss ideas, but also... It's just that that conversation you can have, that conversation we're having now, um, you might be able to sound like quite excited. We don't really speak 
get the opportunity to speak to Bitcoiners all the time. So when we do, like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I get to talk to someone that understands something similar to, to what I do. <laughs> so yeah, as, as many times as you can meet up with Bitcoiners, have a conversation and just and it's, spread. It's, it's going to sound like evangelical, but it's like, I want to say spread the message. Spread the message that there is hope. For me, when I was in my old lifestyle and, and on the rat race, there wasn't much hope for the future. I was, I was hopeful for a better life, but I couldn't really see. I knew something wasn't quite quite right. And it's going to sound crazy, but Bitcoin is saying all the time, Bitcoin fixes this, fix the money, fix the world. We're seeing what's going on in the, the world at the moment with all these endless wars. We believe we have a technology that can fix this. So why would we not tell people about it and try to get them to understand it? I believe it's our duty because we, we understand something to tell people what what good would we be doing to the world? What value would we be providing if we understood Bitcoin as a monetary policy, but also as a technology and didn't speak to anyone about it? It doesn't make sense. So for us, if we believe that it can help the world, we must tell the world about it and create those opportunities, create those spaces for people to learn. Yeah, definitely. And it's th those Bitcoin only meetups and especially the conferences also where you can meet so many people. Uh, for me, it's extremely uh, important. Uh, and that's why I also make uh, advertisement for the Bitcoin Prague conference. Uh, I, I usually only take like sponsors on that I really want to work with. Uh, Bitcoin Prague is not a sponsor of this podcast. I still have like a link down below where I can just buy tickets. Uh, and I, I just love to bring the message out like, meet other people in bitcoin <laughs> it's 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 because there are most bitcoiners i think uh that are not on bitcoin meetups and not having a podcast and stuff like that they don't know a lot a whole lot of other bitcoiners but getting to know other bitcoiners getting in in, in the conferences in the local meetups in like bitcoin prague is in europe a big event so like that's it's like there uh, will be a lot of people there but you can also like just go to a local meetup you don't have to spend the money to travel there you don't have to spend the money to get the tickets for that obviously you meet more, more people there but there are local meetups uh, in austria almost everywhere in Germany, everywhere. I don't know where it's, how it's in America, how it's in where you are based, uh, but uh, it's, there's always a local meetup. You can go and just speak with them and just connect with yeah. other like-minded people. And it's, it's so, it's such an important thing to do if you're a Bitcoiner uh, and, and you are like, because we are really early on. And as you said, uh, internet, there were internet meetups and now there are bitcoin meetups in the future there will bitcoin will be at some point boring bitcoin uh, people will be like <laughs> why did you went to a bitcoin meetup it's like yeah <laughs> then you don't have fear, fear meetups i'm going, I'm <laughs> going to a uh, great british power meetup <laughs> so uh use that opportunity now to meet like such curious and like-minded people and uh, i just can i can any, anybody just encourage to just meet people uh for uh, that are bitcoiners um, I yeah, like what you say. You, you keep talking about Bitcoin earlier as well. Um, we live in a world of, of freedom of choice. And I say to people, um, but the cat can't dismiss the internet. Do you, have you heard of that saying before? The, the what? The cat? It's a, the, the, the cat can't dismiss the internet. Oh, it's, yeah. Um, you, do you know it? Yeah, no, no, so, no. Yeah. Oh, oh, you don't know it. So it's a term, an analogy I heard from Russell Brand, a comedian, um, And he said, I have a cat that I really love. We have fun. Uh, I feed my cat. My cat lives in my house. But I let the cat out, and it goes off and does what it does in the world. The cat comes home, sits on my lap, and I'm on the internet. But the cat, who has knowledge of the world, has no idea what I'm doing on the internet. But the cat cannot say that the internet doesn't exist. But it has no understanding of it, but you can't dismiss it. So I say to people, I tell you to learn about Bitcoin and Bitcoin only, or learn about Bitcoin first. You have the freedom of choice to learn about altcoins or other investments. Um, I'm not dismissing that you can make money on altcoins and other investments. What I'm saying to you is it's manipulated, it's scammed. You're highly likely to get rug pulled. But I can't tell you you must do Bitcoin only. So I'm not dismissing the fact that you can make gains or whatever you want to call it and have fun. Or as Peter McCormick says, go and gamble. You're free to do that. For me... I'm focusing, on, focusing on a technology that I believe can help the world. Um, but I'm also having fun doing it. You may not see it as fun. You may see it as slow and boring. Um, but I'm, so I'm having, 
my, my delay gratification or my low time preference. So yeah, Bitcoin only um, meetups, reading, listening. You are, what we, what we should do is dismiss everything that's going on and not learn about it because you have to know what's going on in the world of space and be able to have a uh, critical, have critical arguments on what's going on. But yeah, ignore the, the noise, just concentrate on a signal, which is what Bitcoin is. And I appreciate especially young people now we live in a, a world of fast money um get things easy learning about crypto and altcoins because some promoter is telling you about it makes it fun makes it easy i'm i'm asking you to do something that's a lot harder i'm asking you to do maybe two hours of research a day i'm going to send you a link to read i'm going to send you a book to read that's a lot more work but I think you'll get a lot more value and benefit more over the long term. So that's my message to people. Follow the, the signal, don't listen to the noise. Bitcoin only. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's sometimes I was in 2021, I was uh, on TikTok, I made TikTok videos, uh, which I still regret, <laughs> but it's, it's, it is what it is. I learned uh, a lot of stuff from there and I got a lot of comments. I also went back then, I made uh, about Bitcoin uh, Bitcoin videos, also about other stuff like there. I was not so focused on, on, on Bitcoin uh, as I am now. But the comment I got on Bitcoin, because I was only focusing on Bitcoin and other investments, but not cryptos, like I was focusing on Tesla and other stuff, but never altcoins. And the comments I got the most was like, but why do you focus on Bitcoin? You can make 100x more money on the altcoins, on Shiba Inu, on SafeMoon, on, on the, all those yeah. uh, shit coins that are just scamming people. And I'm not saying all the altcoins will go to zero but they will be really close to zero compared to Bitcoin because there might be some collector's value. I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I cannot say they are all going yeah. to zero. Uh, they're definitely not money. They're definitely not what Bitcoin is. They're definitely completely something else. Uh, I think they are at best inefficient what they're doing and at worst a complete scam and shitcoin. Uh, but yeah, it's, 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 it's for me, uh, that's why I want to pull out the, the high signal Bitcoin only. Like if I see something in the bio of a guest, like crypto or web, uh, web free or blockchain technology, he's not on my uh, podcast. Okay. I have bit, uh, I have people on that are 5% in Bitcoin and the rest is in gold and they have some other stuff that is okay for me. Gold is an legit investment. I don't only want to have full 100% Bitcoiners on, but I'm not gonna invite scammers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, 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 that's a signal, isn't it? it? It tells you about that person. Um, so for me, I have friendship groups. Um, we talk on WhatsApp. And the, the, the most recent comment was, oh, which coin are we going to back this cycle? And they know me as the, the Bitcoin only guy. They call me Sailor Carbon. And as somebody said, oh, wait for, Je wait for Josiah to comment. And the, their reasoning was, which I can totally understand, our oh, Bitcoin's not going to 10x in, in this cycle. So I just said in the video of Sailor saying, it's going up forever, Laura. Now, are you looking for quick fiat gains for to 10x because you just want to make loads of money now? Or do you want to invest in something that I believe will be generational wealth for your children and your children's children? So you've got to look at your, your time scales. I totally, again, I'm not dismissing why you want to make lots of money now, but for me, I'd say, but that's a risk. I don't want to spend my time and my energy trying to find one out of 20,000 plus coins that may 10x or 100x or whatever. I'd rather just focus on, on, on the one thing and be comfortable and not worry at night and be up all night. And a friend of mine, I'm not going to dox any names, but had come to that realization where they were spending all night up watching charts, but they're not spending time with their family and then thinking about it at work. And at this point, I was Zen with just understanding Bitcoin. And I was like, yeah, what are we trying to achieve here? We want time freedom. Now, you're searching for that one that may give you time freedom, but in this process of doing so, you're damaging yourself for your, your, the time you spend with your family. You're damaging yourself, your, your, your wellness in terms of your health and mindset. But yeah, just lower your time preference, sit back, Focus on the one thing, enjoy your family, and there are no guarantees in life, but I'm near uncertain to say Bitcoin will outperform, as you said, every single altcoin that is being marketed to you right now by somebody that is just 
copied the uh, the Bitcoin code and added their own little thing. But it's just, just trying to make, make money for themselves. And I think it's a mind virus. If you have this uh, gamble mindset, this um, lottery mindset, as, like I have a strict rule. I will never spend money on anything that's based on luck, uh, based on gamble, based on uh, like uh, just just pure lottery stuff. Uh, I never participated in any uh, giveaways, like comment here, maybe you get something. Never. Not because the investment of me typing in and liking something is so high, just because I don't want to participate in those games because it's not, it's, 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 I think starting of a mind virus. First, it's a small giveaway. Then you play lottery. All of a sudden, you're spending 20 euros per month on something that you might get yeah. a big shot, but you're actually losing every month money because those, those games are rigged from a, a odds point of view. Uh, and the same thing is with, with, with altcoins, with shitcoins. Um, of course, you can make a lot of money if you are lucky, but you can also go in a casino and bet on on green and bet on, <laughs> on, on red. I, I'm not dismissing yeah. that you can make a lot of money. I'm just saying, whereas like you have a choice, like do you want to play lottery or do you actually want to provide value for other people and be uh, um, uh, provide value basically? So, and I tend to just make like Bitcoin is my savings technology and I will provide value for other people's and that way I get value from other people back and can save it and can spend the rest of my time with family, with friends uh, and uh, with stuff I want to do. Like this is, uh, yeah, and, uh, sorry for this small ramble, but uh, this is had to no, go. No, no, I totally <laughs> appreciate it. And it's conversations I have in my mind daily and have with friends and family. Um, so it's, it's always nice again to speak to other people because you understand it because if you didn't have this opportunity to speak with other people, it can become draining, but also um, yeah, it can become exhausting because you have an understanding or think a certain way others around you aren't and you're constantly battling. It's like, where, where, where are my people? Uh, so yeah, with the, with the hoodies that I, I've started to make, I found I had one called Find Your Tribe. Um, I met somebody, again, through Orange for that, who lived locally to me, who I thought lived a million miles away, but we were able to link up. We've, we've, met, we've met numerous times, but we were able to have conversation we don't we won't agree on everything but we coming from at the same starting point and yeah mm. so find your tribe we are out there um to bitcoiners that, that are listening don't be disheartened if you are the only bitcoiner in the village <laughs> there may be someone else someone else lurking <laughs> amazing amazing and maybe for that like oha moment and this uh bitcoiner getting um What was for you like an absolute massive, like, oh shit, this is Bitcoin? Like, did you have this light bulb moment uh, in Bitcoin where, like, oh shit, Bitcoin is actually changing the world? Uh, I mean, you talked a little bit beforehand about your rabbit hole uh, story, uh, but did, do you have like one thing where, like, oh, I learned this about Bitcoin and all of a sudden it makes sense for me now? Yeah. Um, so I, I mentioned at the start, I always felt like, There wasn't something quite right. I couldn't put my finger on. And I liken it to Neo in the Matrix where he knew the world around him wasn't, wasn't quite real. Um, for me, I'd started the, my rabbit hole journey learning about Bitcoin. And in the same month, another friend of mine told me to watch Zeitgeist. Um, have, you, have you heard of the film? Uh, Zeitgeist. It's like, um, yes, it's like a documentary, but it talks about the history of the world. Um, it didn't talk about religion and money, but it was, I won't give too much away, but it was the final scene. Uh, so this book, this movie was made, I believe, in 2007. I probably got that wrong, but it was before Bitcoin was was released, before Satoshi released Bitcoin. So it, it, this was an orange called aha moment, when at the end of the film, they talk about shutting people's money off in CBDCs. And it was then, they're like, that's it. This isn't planned. This is a place. This is going to happen. Bitcoin is the antidote. This is This is what's going to save us. Up until that point, yes, I, I could see how it works. But yeah, when it's that point in the film, I thought, yeah, this, this is what Bitcoin is for. This is what it's about. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, before we end up the podcast, um, uh, I have to ask you, who's your favorite football player? Who's your favorite team? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite player and, and team, they probably 
coincide, they could come together. It was Ian Wright and Arsenal. So I started, started supporting Arsenal because of Ian Wright. Um, and I believe he has a, the, the typical Bitcoiner story. He never gave up. He became a professional football player late, um, but continued to, 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 to show his proof of work on when he played Mung League, got a chance at Crystal Palace and then played for Arsenal, became what, the highest goal scorer, still involved with the, with the club now. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, never really conformed to what a footballer should be. So I always spoke as these true opinions, um, which is what we want to do as Bitcoiners. We want freedom of speech. And how he played on the pitch, he played, he played with freedom and flair. Um, I think that's what Bitcoiners should do. Live your life how you want to live it, as long as you're not harming anyone, intentionally harming anyone, or as long as you're creating value for people. He created value on the pitch by scoring great goals and being entertaining. Um, so yeah, Ian, Ian Wright is my, my football hero and Arsenal are my football team. Amazing, amazing. How about you? Do you have a team? Do you, do you have a football team? I have a team, yes. It's it's Red Bull Salzburg. It's an uh, Austrian uh, football uh, team. I'm not watching a lot of football. <laughs> but I have, this, I have this routine where I go uh, once a, a season uh, or all two years or something like that, uh, do a Champions League uh, match from Red Bull Salzburg uh, with my dad. It's more about the moment with my dad and less about uh, the, the game yeah. itself. Uh, I was, for like a few years, a big Red Bull Salzburg fan. Uh, was in like, I watched like regularly every second week or so a football game. Now I almost never watch it. Probably it will uh, change a little bit with the, the World Cup uh, because then all of a sudden everybody's watching again. Uh, but I'm 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 always saying like I, I don't play games. I, I don't uh, do a lot because now I'm like really focused on on building this podcast and building so much stuff. Uh, I I really enjoy watching. Maybe I'm starting again when like retired with like 70 years old or something like that <laughs> because I, I, enjoy I, t- it. I totally understand you. Yeah, so uh, and, we speak about in the Bitcoin space bread and circuses, don't we? So I totally understand that you, people may see sport as bread and circuses. Yeah. I don't watch a lot of football now because whenever I'm doing something, Bitcoin is probably like you is in the back of your mind. How can what what is Bitcoin? How can it relate to this situation? Or oh, I've mm. thought about this about Bitcoin. Uh, but I appreciate football as a great medium for people to understand it. So that's why yes. I, I use use football. But um, yeah, I I don't watch football as much as I used to. Um, because like you, dedicating your time to something that you believe is more more valuable for the, for the world. Yeah, I mean, I have also this, like, whenever I spend time just watching stuff uh, and not spending with family, uh, girlfriend, uh, friends or something like that, or being productive, uh, I don't know if this is healthy or not, <laughs> not, not <laughs> but I always have this when like, oh, I could do uh, now edit the video. I could do something else. I could do some yeah. some better tweets. I could do something productive with my life. Or something else, yeah. maybe I can I can finally start my newsletter that I'm talking about like a few weeks now. Uh, I did not do it now. Uh, I could. Uh, I'm I want to um, write a book next year, uh, and and uh, still like I could just start it now like why wait till next year so like always like when I'm laid back and not eating something uh, not doing something that I have to do or spending time with family and friends I have this like oh I could do something productive now so like yeah. why I'm not doing it <laughs> well it's, it's a I call it should we call it a healthy obsession so it's good. It's, it's good for it's, the mind and body. It, it, it's definitely an obsession. Uh, I don't. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't want to be the judge of if it if it's healthy. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it makes you think about your time preference, doesn't it? So yeah. which, which whatever you choose to do, you take responsibility for that. And if it doesn't benefit you immediately or in the future, you have to ask yourself the question: Why? Why am I doing? It? Yeah, and uh, the the good thing is, uh, like everything I'm doing is will benefit me as I think really greatly in the future. So I'm I'm do I'm doing it for future Robin. The future Robin can exactly. relax and watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that. Exactly delayed gratification. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, we're coming to the end routine uh, of our podcast, where the previous guest uh, that was on my show is asking a question for the next guest, kind of the blockchain. Uh, is, okay. is uh, where every guest is connected to each other. Um, and the question for you is, what do you see as the biggest challenge for uh, Bitcoin adoption in the coming years? Um, for me, it's just the understanding of it. Um, most recently, I think there's an influencer that's come out that said, he 
he's doing interviews with people. Oh, the halving is coming, which means there'll be only 10.5 Bitcoin, 10.5 billion Bitcoins available. Like, no, no, you haven't understood it. And you're, you're now you're giving people misinformation. So for me, yeah, it's education. That's the biggest challenge. We spoke about adoption, how it's becoming easier. But with that, we need to make sure people are educated. Um, either you're doing educating yourself, yourself with the podcast, myself with the Bitcoin ballers, or if you're just finding information out, intended people, podcasts to read, uh, to listen to, books to read, YouTube videos to watch. Um, yeah, we need to be, to do our due diligence with the information that we're providing to people and not just telling them, learn about Bitcoin and leaving them to their own devices. They may find, end up following this youth, this influencer, taking his advice and end up getting scammed, rug pulled or having a bad experience with Bitcoin, which I know people have had this cycle just because they've heard, has heard about Bitcoin, they bought some, watched it go down, sold, and their experience is, oh, Bitcoin's a rubbish investment, I lost money. Okay, but did you learn about it? Did you read? Did you listen? Did you ask questions? Or did you just follow somebody? So yeah, biggest barrier will be the education, but I believe we're making fantastic strides in, in doing so. There's, there's so much out there, as, as we said, there's no excuse. <laughs> Definitely, and... I'm I'm looking forward to the this year's uh, this this cycle's noise because I think always in the in the bull runs the noise is getting bigger and uh, this is why I like I really like 2022 and even last year because it was kind of uh, low on the noise and this year you can already see like the first months it's like there's uh, there's this influence as you mentioned uh, coming up there's so much noise coming up in the Bitcoin community it's fun to document it definitely gets me more views for the podcast uh, but but honestly I prefer the bear markets there are where all the Bitcoiners are in there and all the Bitcoiners that are building stuff in Bitcoin are in there and where the hard grind is really and this is the, the this is the stuff I'm really passionate about uh, and the bull market is fun uh, I, I document everything. I will interview over 300 people this year on this podcast. Wow. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I, I have to also this uh, plan to have Michael Saylor as a 300th guest in, in the end of the year on. I did not ask him by now, but let's see if he says yes if I'm asking put, him. <laughs> put, it, put it out there. He, he's, he's done so much for so many people uh, uh, online just by retweeting and commenting. So again, if, if enough people believe it, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you share this clip... I'll share it. It may get back to him somehow. <laughs> yeah, he actually, um, uh, there was a time last year where a lot of people made this AI pictures of Bitcoin. Uh, and I also like did it every day, like eight of them. And actually, Michael Saylor reposted and tagged me on those uh, uh, bit uh, photos like every third day or something like that. He definitely is okay. in my like he definitely saw me, but it's a different yeah. story. But uh, yeah, the, I will I, I will do everything in my power to to get in as a the the three hundredth guest uh, on my podcast <laughs> because this is my goal for the year, and I think what better way to end it as with Michael Saylor. Yeah, definitely perfect. Then uh, I hope, I thank, hope it happens. It will happen. Put it into. A, Right, man, it got to manifest it. It will happen. <laughs> I, I, I try my best, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Coach Cam. Uh, thank you for being on. Thank you for being an uh, insightful speaker on the on those topics we discussed today. I'm, I'm loving your, your spirit. I'm loving your energy. I can feel it that you're really positive and you're driving Bitcoin adoption. Um, for people that want to ask you questions, want to engage with you, where can people reach you? Um, Twitter is probably the best place. That's where I hang out. So it's at Josias Carbon, J-O-S-I-A-S-C-A-R-B-O-N. Um, on Instagram, coachcarbon.life. Uh, you can also find my YouTube channel, uh, Carbon Channel TV. I couldn't just get I couldn't just get the Carbon TV, someone had it, so it's Carbon Channel TV. But if you check out my website, coachcarbon.life, you'll find everything I'm doing on there. So yeah, any questions, any thoughts, yeah, just just connect. Uh, find me on, on Nostra as well. I'm on, I'm on there. LinkedIn, Coach Carbon. Just reach out and let, let's make the world a better place. <laughs> really cool. Thank you for being on.